about vectors and vector addition. You are familiar with vectors. Some physical quantities such as time, temperature, mass, density, electric charges can be described completely by a single number with the unit. Many other quantities, however, have direction and that they cannot be described by a single number. For example, velocity, acceleration, force, you cannot explain them by using a single number. To describe the motion of a body, we must not only focus on its magnitude, but also about its direction. Same is the case with force. Force is another example. When we push or pull our body, we exert a force on it. To describe a force, we need to describe the direction in which it acts, as well as its magnitude or how hard the force pushes or pulls. A physical quantity is described by a single number and is called a scalar quantity. Whereas the quantities which contains both the magnitude and the direction, we call them vector quantities. Calculations with single quantities are easier. We only use arithmetic rules to simply add them or to multiply them or to divide them. We are just dealing with numbers. Whereas it is different for vectors. Vector quantities play an essential role in all areas of physics. So we turn now to a discussion for their nature and the operation of vector addition. Now let's take a look how we add a vector quantity. To know about their additions, first of all, we must know what is a vector quantity, how we represent it. We begin with a vector quantity called displacement. When a particle which we represent as a point moves from one location in space to another, it undergoes a displacement. See figure 1.3a. Here a vector is representing, which is starting from point P1 and heading towards P2, which has been shown by a line segment P1, P2 with an arrowhead at P2 to represent the direction of motion. Displacement is a vector quantity because we must state not only how far the particle moves, but also in what direction. <clears throat> a displacement of three kilometer north is not the same as displacement of three kilometers southeast. If I say I'm moving towards right is not equals to if I say I'm moving towards left. We usually represent a rep displacement by a single letter, A. Keep it in mind that whenever we represent a vector quantity, we will use our alphabet in a bold letter or a arrowhead at the top. If you see the figure 1-3, You will observe a written A with the arrow head over it. This means we are representing a vector quantity over here. Here uh, they use the bold face as you can see this A. It is representing a vector quantity. Whereas for scalar quantities, we do not need to bold them. 
in handwriting vector symbols are usually underlined or written with the arrow c either i can underline a or i should put a arrow head over the letter if i am not bolding it while writing likhte hue the vectors from point p3 to point p4 in figure 1-3b has the same length and direction as one from p1 to p2 c if you observe carefully they both p3 to p4 and p1 to p2 the line segments have the same length moving in the same direction so what we call these vectors these two displacements are equal even though they start at different points by definition two quantities are equal if they have the same magnitude means length and direction no matter where they are located in the space so we call them as the uh, we call them as equal <clears throat> vector b however is not equal to a c if you observe it you will observe that its direction is opposite see the arrow head is over here whereas the arrow head of these two quantities are at the top whereas its magnitude magnitude is also less than these two vectors so the vector b however is not equal to a because its direction is opposite to that of a we define the negative of vector as a vector having the same magnitude but opposite direction to the original vector see we are comparing two vectors rather we are comparing three vectors one vector was p1 to p2 as a then p3 to p4 which i also named as a and then a vector b if you see this p1 p2 and p3 p4 they have the same magnitude and the same direction so they are equal whereas if i compare this p1 p2 with vector b Excuse me. Then you can observe that this is moving in another direction. This is moving in totally opposite direction. It has some different magnitude. It has some different magnitude. So these two vectors are not equal. we define a negative of a vector as a vector having same magnitude but opposite direction to the original vector the negative vector quantity a is denoted as negative of a and we use a bold face minus to emphasize the vector quantity thus the relation between a and b may be written as a equals to minus b or b equals to this means that the direction of a and b are totally opposite to each other while writing what we can do is if we are not bolding the letters we will put a arrow head over here with this negative sign the vectors a and b are anti parallel if they are not equal they are anti parallel and those two vectors p1 p2 and p3 p4 they were parallel ones note that a bold face equal sign is also used to emphasize the equality of two vector quantities is not the same relationship as equality of scalar quantities yes it doesn't mean that 2 is equals to 2 
it means that two vector quantities are equal means either they are equal in the magnitude and the direction displacement is always a uh, in the straight line directed from starting point to the end point even though the path of the particle may be curved what is the displacement actually displacement is the shortest distance between the two points so it is it is always in a straight line consider the figure 1-4 when a particle moves along a curved path from p1 to p2 see this is the distance a particle covered if i talk about its displacement i will draw a straight line to show the displacement starting from p1 and ending at p2 the displacement is still the vector a shown see i have represented my displacement with a bold letter a also when it continues on to p3 to p1 the displacement for the entire trip is zero t and a and a particle move from p1 heading towards p2 starting from p2 moving towards p3 and then from p3 coming back to p1 if you draw a resultant or a displacement see this displacement is in this direction and then the displacement will be in the opposite direction so both the displacement cancel each other and what you get is a zero at the end ये देखें P1 से P2 तक की डिस्प्लेसमेंट इस डायरेक्शन में होगी P2 से P1 तक की डिस्प्लेसमेंट इस डायरेक्शन में होगी दोनों डिस्प्लेसमेंट एक दूसरे को कैंसिल कर देंगी और एट दी एंड हमारे पास कोई डिस्प्लेसमेंट नहीं बचेगी now how to represent the magnitude of a vector quantity we represent the magnitude of a vector quantity which we can say we are representing its length in case of displacement so how we can represent it is by the same letter used for the vector but in a light italic type rather than the bold face italic ठीक है हम उसका बोल्ट खत्म कर देंगे वेन वी आर रेप्रेजेंटिंग मैग्नीट्यूड इफ यू कैन सी हेयर दे हैव नॉट बोल्ड द लेटर ए फॉर मैग्नीट्यूड वॉट इज एन अल्टरनेट मेथड वाइल राइटिंग विच वी कैन अडोप्ट हम अपने ही वेक्टर को जिससे रेप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं लाइक ए को वी विल पुट इट in between the vertical bars sa so it means we are representing the magnitude by definition the magnitude of a vector quantity is a scalar quantity yes keep it in mind whenever i'm talking about the magnitude of a vector quantity i'm actually telling about इट्स अ स्केलर पोर्शन वेक्टर क्वान्टिटी दो चीजों से मिलकर बनी है एक कि वो उसकी लेंथ क्या है प्लस वो किस डायरेक्शन में जा रही है सो so, अगर आप डायरेक्शन को छोड़ देंगे तो वो क्या बन जाएगी स्केलर क्वान्टिटी बन जाएगी वी ऑल्सो नो दैट अ वैक्टर क्वान्टिटी कैन नेवर बी इक्वल टू स्केलर वन बिकॉज दे आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ क्वान्टिटीज वी कैन नॉट एड दैम we cannot equate them theek hai the expression a is equals to 6 meter 
is just as wrong as two oranges equals to three apples. They are totally different. You cannot equate them. Or six ounces equals to seven kilometers. So it's it's entirely different values. Now suppose a particle undergoes a displacement a, a followed by a second displacement b, as shown in Figure One Dash Five A. C. Its one motion is in this direction, and then in this direction. The final result is the same as though it had started at the same initial point and undergoes a single displacement C. If a particle starts from A, then move towards B, then its displacement will be C, which is the shortest distance. Okay, we we can uh, further explain it by putting this B to this side and this A to this side, making a parallelogram, and then you will find a resultant in between that you have already read in your intermediate class. So this, what I am actually wanted to tell you is. That C is basically the sum of A and B. This shortest distance means the sum of these two quantities. We call it C as the vector sum of displacement A and B, and the relationship is expressed as C equals to A plus B. All are in bold letters. The bold face plus sign emphasizes that adding two vectors requires a geometrical process and is not the same operation as adding two scalars. Two plus three equals to five. No, it's not the same. C is representing that we are adding two vector quantities. Vector quantities further have their components, they have their directions, they have their magnitudes. So we cannot add them as we add two plus three equals to five. If we make a displacement A and B in the reverse order. With B first and A second, the result is same as shown in the figure. A plus B is equals to B plus A, so it holds a commutative law. We call the sum vector as a resultant vector. In Figure One Dash Six. Two vectors are being added. In Figure A, both the vectors are parallel. So when we add them, the magnitude will increase. Whereas in Figure B, both are anti-parallel. So when we add them, the magnitude will decrease. What if we have more than two vectors? How will we add them? See in Figure A, we have more than two vectors, A, B, C, D. So what we will do? We will first take any two of the vectors, take their resultant, then we will put that resultant in place of those two vectors, and then we will add that resultant with any of the other vector. Uska resultant lenge, phir usko further add karenge. And at the end, we will get the total resultant vector.
जैसे कि यहाँ है ए बी का रिजल्टेंट लेंगे जो रिजल्टेंट आएगा उसको सी के साथ ऐड करेंगे फिर जो रिजल्टेंट आएगा उसको डी के साथ ऐड करेंगे बी में भी ऐसे ही होगा और सी के केस में भी ऐसे ही होगा A vector quantity such as displacement can be multiplied with the scalar quantity. We can multiply it with any scalar number. Suppose if you want to multiply two with a displacement, then yes, we can multiply it. But we cannot add a scalar quantity in a vector quantity. We can multiply a scalar quantity with a vector quantity, but we cannot add them. Commutative law does not hold for anti-parallel vectors, as we have already discussed that a plus b is equals to b plus a, but a minus b is not equals to b minus a. I can write it like this: a minus b is equals to a plus bracket minus b. This reminds me that b is the Anti-parallel vector, but I cannot write it as a minus b is equals to b minus a. No, this law does not hold for anti-parallel vectors. So this is all for today. What we discussed is about vectors, vector quantities. how can we add them how can we represent them how can we relate them with the scalar quantities and what laws they hold if you have any question you can ask now